right, so most people drive to work every day and it's, you know, the same thing over and over again, repetition, but this summer I was lucky enough to help out at a place where it was anything but normal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I really had an experience that I wasn't expecting. Uh, a guy I grew up with, Dave Seidenberg, is, uh, I don't really know how to describe him other than he, he's kind of a madman because only a madman would, you know, start a business from scratch just kind of on a whim. Most people won't just go for it the way he did. And uh, we build cannons. <laughs> And, you know, when I tell people that, no one really believes me. They, they think, like, I'm crazy or they don't realize to what magnitude that there's blacksmithing, uh, there's welding of all kinds, aluminum welding, uh, MIG welding, TIG welding, any kind of welding. And we make everything from basically scratch so including the nuts and bolts but yeah it's uh we build cannons at seed artillery so anyway since the beginning of mankind there's always been wars uh whether in america or japan or anywhere and cannons have kind of been, you know, the go-to weapon of choice to mow people down, mow buildings down, castles, ships, anything. And uh, they're still used to this day. And out at Seed Artillery, we build replicas and we restore old cannons. And we also build new ones, whether it be for competition or whether we build a replica for a cemetery or a museum or they might find a barrel from a pirate ship on the bottom of the ocean that's been sitting there for 400 years and we might end up with it and these blueprints are legitimately off of original design so you know everything is exact and they're off of the original design that was you know it could be 300 years old from the 1700s or whatever we're working on it is the design so starting from scratch you know making the bolts and everything else i guess i can start with most things come from depending on what we're doing so if we're building a replica everything is cast in a foundry and we build we build the replicas out of aluminum especially if they're going to sit outside because it would just make sense right uh it'll never rot it'll never it, it, it's a lifetime guarantee so it comes from the foundry and as anything else it comes from a foundry it needs sanded uh, there's you know some lines from the castings and there's imperfections needs bonded and then it gets taken down to smooth perfection before it gets primered and painted but it's quite the process and you know a lot of people don't really understand what goes into these but you know it's a lot but it's not something that you know you tire of really it's not something that's boring it's constantly different because every time you make one of these cannons they're different so it's it's just one of those things that you could tell someone a hundred times you know and they don't understand until they see it so i decided that i wanted to film bits and pieces of what we do here and make it into a little video because I've tried to explain this to so many different people and they just, they don't get it. They're like, huh? Like you build cannons? It's, it just doesn't make sense to them for some reason. 
and I'm like, yeah, you know, like actual cannons, but uh, it's not until you see it, you you just have to kind of take my word for it. But you know, it's like anything else. It's almost like working in a body shop a lot of times, uh, especially when you're in the spray room like this. You know, you're doing bondo work, and then you well you sand, then you do the bondo work, then you sand, then you then you primer, and then you paint. But there's a lot of stages to this, and not every stage is going to be filmed here in this video, but there's a you have to put a couple coats of each, obviously, and then there's a wood graining technique, which you'll see in a moment, that, you know, I don't show you necessarily how it's done, but you need to make this look like it's made out of wood, because cannons were made out of wood. So, if you just uh, leave it flat, it's not going to look authentic. So, we really uh, take pride in the work we do because we're one of the only places left in the United States that still does it. Uh, there were a few, you know, and then after COVID and some other events, uh, I'm pretty sure that we're the last company, especially definitely in Pennsylvania. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty rewarding to be able to you know, say that you were a part of it, especially when you get these done and then you send them out the door, it's, it's, it's pretty rewarding. And the green that you're seeing on here is the actual, I mean, it's, it's down to the code. It's the actual green that was on the cannons that we build. Every cannon that we build gets the exact color that it would have been, depending on what war, depending on what country had it. And uh, there's the wood grain technique. But, I mean, people that come in and they stumble upon this shop and they, they step in and they they see these cannons, they, they can't believe that they're made out of aluminum. Which, not all of them are, but the ones that are with the wood grain, they you can't tell. Like, you would never know. Even looking at it after I'm done, I, I can't believe, you know, how authentic it looks. It's It's pretty surprising. But there's a lot to this. There's a lot of tedious painting, as you can see. And this was the first one that I ever did. So I taped it all off. But you know, after doing it for a while, it's a lot faster just to cut in. You don't even need the tape. But I was a little nervous during this one because it's my first one, and I didn't want to, you know, screw up my first paint job. So. keep in mind all the black gets two coats so you know you really uh and when you're doing four wheels or five wheels or whatever when you're doing a full paint job on one of these cannons it's it's very time consuming it's not something that you can get done in an hour now here's a good example of the wood grain dry Now I've seen these side by side with the exact same cannons, but they were the wooden versions. They were the real versions next to these. And, you know, I can't even tell the difference. But that being said, a lot of these cannons go to collectors or whoever. And sometimes they actually have original barrels that were from the Civil War or whatever war and they just go on an aluminum body or chassis because that's just uh, it still has the history that cannon was actually in war with a barrel and you know but the chassis will never rot now after paint you know you have to kind of rethread your hill your holes because the paint gets in there sometimes. This 
this is the exciting part putting everything back together because like I said before it's very rewarding seeing it all come together and then when you're seeing a finished product it's it's a pretty proud moment to know that you built it from start to finish I never thought in a million years that I would ever build a cannon or even work on a cannon let alone build one from start to finish so after my first one it was a pretty great experience and this was like a school I mean I had no idea what I was doing and Dave kind of walked me through everything step by step and once you do it you know it's not rocket science but you come to realize that the engineers and the designers whoever engineered these things back in the day how accurate and perfectly they were designed it makes me feel really stupid so this is a second cannon you know i've built many during my time there but uh, every one of them are different so you know this is a smaller version of what I just built and you know this is more of a process of sometimes you know you have to extend bolts or you have to cut them down they might be too long sometimes you have to work with what we have because you know this isn't a guarantee there's no you know you can't just like buy these parts you, you have to make them so it's uh i had to extend these bolts on this particular one but all of these are internal so you don't see them anyway on the insides It's almost like putting a model car together. If you've ever built a model car and you read the directions, it's exactly like that. But you have to fit everything together and test fit before you tear it all back down. You have to mock everything up to make sure it fits and all the holes are where they belong. And then you tear it apart and prep it and get it ready for paint. Makes sense, right? Those are trunnion caps. That's what holds the barrel on, and you know, everything's fabricated, including you, know, you have to weld these little nipples on there. And there's there's a step to everything. It's uh, there's a lot of little steps in between, but everything has its importance. No step can be left unfinished. And if it's not done right, somebody will notice. Mostly Dave, but there's a reason for that because these things sell for pretty big money and most of the collectors are fanatics and they study these. And if something's in the wrong place, if a hole is not where it belongs or a bolt is not where it belongs or it's crooked, they will notice. And we guarantee our work, so it's very important that everything's done right. And I actually screwed one of these up and I had to re-drill it out and re-tap it because I made the ring go the wrong way. But those things happen almost daily. This one's almost ready for paint.
back in the paint booth, but I just felt that it was necessary to show every step. Now this has a different base coat for the primer. Uh, it's an orange, obviously, which is, it, it, it all comes out basically the same, but sometimes we use the orange and sometimes we use the gray. basically the same concept and there are many pieces I mean once you tear everything back down and you really look at everything it is a uh, pretty it's pretty intense how many little pieces you have and it takes a lot of tries to make sure everything's covered because you got to twist and turn every single one of these and make sure that they're covered and they're they're painted black or else that orange will stick out like a sore thumb which is a good thing because if it wasn't orange you might not notice it until it's too late and obviously everything has to have its time to cure so you have to let the primer cure overnight then you come in the next day and you can lay down your coat your other coat of paint but if it's not if it's done within a 24-hour period it's it's too soon so you got to really have some time management when it comes to these or else you could be holding yourself up for days many late nights in this room Sad to see them go, but it feels good at the same time. Now this project, this is a naval carrier, and as you can see, it's large. This is one of Dave's crazy experiments. Uh, customer wanted it, and he made it happen. Pretty much anything that you want, Dave will make it happen, even if it sounds crazy. I mean, take a look at that. It's bigger than him and uh, he made it work someone wanted it that big and that was that but this one's getting done a little bit different it's gonna have a gray primer and then he decided to go with a red and black scheme This is definitely one of the neatest projects that I've ever been a part of because I watched it come in tiny pieces and he welded all these together to make these large cheeks and I couldn't even picture it when it all came in pieces and then, you know, to be able to be a part of this and paint it and uh, step back and look at it after it was all one big piece, it was... I can't really explain it. I wish it was on my property. And believe it or not, you know, after doing this for a half hour straight, obviously the video is very sped up, but it's tiresome. I mean, you're sweaty. It's uh, 
it's a lot of movement <laughs> you're all over the place and it's also very stressful because you don't want to screw this up especially a project of this magnitude you don't want to cause runs and depending on the humidity level if it's raining outside or anything like that you can really screw up a paint job you got to be really careful how heavy you go with it but sometimes you know you don't go heavy enough and then that can be problematic as well All in all, I think I turned out pretty well. And, uh, you know, I was really liking this red. We weren't too sure about it at first, but I think it turned out pretty beautiful. Now, mind you, this is before wood grain, but it gets wood grained as well. But, yeah, it was really neat to be a part of this project. And, uh, there's not another place on earth like this place, and uh, I'm very proud that I got to experience this and build one of a kind weapons of destruction <laughs> because there's nowhere else, you know, unless you're in the military or you work in some secret operation. But the neat thing about this place is these are actual replicas of. You know the original pieces that you know we're bringing them back to life and, and we're the only ones doing it and you can't find how often do you see a cannon so and I mean a real cannon you know and when you see them every day you start to see them everywhere and you start to really appreciate what went into them because you never think about it until you build one but yeah, for all your cannon needs, look up Seed Artillery, Altoona, Pennsylvania, and uh, he'll make your dreams come true. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.